In the wake of the Newtown, Connecticut tragedy, we preached a sermon and did a Bible study on dealing with processing tragedy and what God's Word has to say about it. We've received so much feedback that we wanted to circle back and share a couple of additional things with you. I want to talk to you about parents and children and how you talk to your kids because there's so much news coverage, so much media interaction, so much conversation about these terrible events. Your kids are likely to know. And so there are just a few things I want to mention. Number one, if your kids are young, let's say maybe through second grade, don't bring the subject up. Let them share with you. They'll bring it to you. And when they're frightened or when they're concerned, then talk to them. But don't give them all the information you have. Share with them just what they need in order to feel peaceful and calm. If your kids are a little bit older than that, maybe up through fifth or sixth grade, ask them what they're seeing and hearing. And, and when the subject comes up, and that's a great opportunity for you to begin a conversation. For our older kids, you know, it's, you know it's on their minds. They've heard about it, they've seen the images, and it's time to talk about it. Now, when you do have these conversations, there are three things I'd like you to think about. Number one, you need to let your kids know it's okay. If they are feeling scared or if they are feeling sad, it's perfectly all right. That's a, a normal and that's a, a real reaction to this. In fact, what I would encourage you to do is let them know you have the very same feelings. You know, our kids need to learn how to do life from us, not just learning the traditions or not just learning the work ethic. They need to, to learn how to deal with the hard emotions that we'd rather not have, and they need to learn that from you. Number two, you need to remind your kids this happened far, far away. Now, that's not to pretend like it couldn't happen in your neighborhood, in our community. But the reality is that we don't want them to become so overwrought and so fearful that they think it has happened to them. And so we need to remind them it happened far away and that they are safe. They're right there with you and they're safe and that their school is safe. And parents, if you don't know the safety procedures or how it is that your school goes about keeping your kids safe, I'd encourage you to ask some questions. Finally, there is something we can do for these children and their families. We can pray for them. And so when your kids talk about being afraid, remind them they can pray for the families, they can pray for the kids, they can pray for God's blessing on that community. In addition, take the opportunity to remind them of God's love. That's what Christmas is about, that's what the gospel is about, that God so loved the world. He loved the world so much that he promises he never leaves us, he never is separated from us. You know, one of the things that I remember from years ago when my kids were young, there was a television program called Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. And Mr. Rogers, once upon a time, was talking to kids and talking about how to, how to deal with kids that are afraid in tragic or, or emergency kinds of situations. And he encouraged parents to redirect their kids' attention and remind them that every time there's some big, scary thing going on, instead of seeing just the scary parts, to look for all of the helpers that God has put in that situation. So you look for the firefighters and you look for the police officers and the pastors and the teachers and, and all of the folks who are there to help. And it reminds our little ones that not only is God there with them, but that God has put people in their lives to help even when things are scary. One of the things we can remind our kids is that God makes a promise that he will never leave our side. And so for us here, for those children that lost their lives, for the parents who are grieving, Jesus was with them every moment, loving them and caring for them. Finally, we can remind the kids that even though some people go to heaven way too young in life, from our perspective, heaven is the best place ever. You know, it's important. When we face these kinds of things, it's important that we have conversations with our children and we help to shape their understanding both of what has happened and their part in it. As Christian people, we know that our part is always to trust our God and to lift up our prayers to Him.